Hey everyone and welcome to yet another on the road edition of WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week. I'm your host and all-around security nerd, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting February 18th, 2013. This week's episode comes from the land of the rising sun, otherwise known as Japan. And because I'm traveling, I only have time for two major stories this week. Nonetheless, I'll throw some extra stories in the reference section of the WatchGuard Security Center post associated with this video. So be sure to check it out. Let's start with the biggest story from early in the week, which was alleged evidence connecting the Chinese government to many of the advanced persistent attacks we've seen in the past few years. You might remember the name Mandiant. That was the security company that helped the New York Times uh, examine the breach to their network, which allegedly came from China. Well, this week, Mandiant released a very full white paper, a 71-page white paper, detailing what they say is evidence that proves that the Chinese government is associated with many of these advanced persistent attacks. Without going into all the details, over the years, Mandiants forensically examined many of these breaches stealing intellectual property from U.S. organizations. And they found many of the attacks come from four different locations in Shanghai. One location in specific is related to the People's Liberation Army of China, a group called PLC 61398. So the paper essentially suggests that APT1, which is the name they give to the primary APT actor group, is probably PLC uh, 61398. Now, the paper goes into a ton of detail. I suggest you download it and read it. It really is a very good read. However, not everyone agrees that the paper contains true evidence connecting China's government to this crime. As everyone knows, there's many different ways to, to hide where attacks are coming from. Attribution is very, very difficult on the internet. And some security researchers suggest that if these really are advanced attackers, why did they not do more to hide their location? Uh, they also talk about the fact that there's many different computer networks in China and, and in Shanghai, so how can you definitely connect this to the Chinese government? Nonetheless, it's still a very interesting paper, so I suggest you check it out. One other interesting tidbit, along with this paper, Mandiant released a video showing a alleged Chinese APT actor actually a attacking a computer network. One thing I found interesting about this video is when we talk about APT attacks, we usually talk about very, very advanced tools, not nor your normal criminal botnets or malware. Nonetheless, in this video, the tools you see the attacker use, things like Ghost Rat, are actually freely available tools you can find online. They're not what I would consider the most advanced attack tools. They're actually very run-of-the-mill, very similar to normal botnet commands and controls and remote access trojans. So personally, I was kind of surprised at how normal and not super advanced this particular video's attack was. Nonetheless, check it out. It's quite interesting. The second and last story this week I want to cover is a combination of some major network breaches along with a zero-day Java vulnerability and some more Java updates. During the week, we learned that both Facebook and, more interestingly, Apple had employees in their networks whose computers were taken over with malware. As it turned out, both Facebook employees and Apple employees visited a particular iPhone development site, iPhone Dev SDK. I don't recommend you check out this site. While they do say they've cleaned up this malware, it was uh, infected with malware previously. Anyways, this particular legitimate iPhone development site had been booby-trapped with some new Java Zero Day. And not only did this infect some Facebook employees, but it also infected some Apple employees and infected some Mac computers, further proving that Macintosh computers are not immune to attack. 
Now the good news is both Facebook and Apple say that no sensitive customer data was stolen in this particular breach. Nonetheless, the attack did uncover some new Java Zero Day, and as a result, there's been some more Java updates. On February 19th, uh, Oracle released an emergency Java patch, even though they released one just a few weeks ago, and this emergency patch fixes five new Java vulnerabilities. So if you use Oracle Java on any platform, you need to go get that patch. Also, Apple released a OS X update for Java as well. Uh, being that Mac employees were infected by this particular malware, you definitely want to patch your Mac computers as well. So long story short, Java is very dangerous. Over the past few months, I've repeatedly warned you of different vulnerabilities that have been exploited in the wild. Attackers are definitely uh, targeting Java now. If you use Java and you have to keep Java, whether it's on Mac, Linux, or Windows PC, Go update immediately and keep your eye out for new updates to install them as quickly as possible. If there's any way possible you can get rid of Java and stop using it, I highly recommend it since attackers are targeting this application quite consistently. So that does it for this week's abbreviated on the road edition of WatchGuard Security Week in Review. Be sure to check out the reference section of our post where I'll put some extra stories if I can. And as always, you should always follow the WatchGuard Security Center blog where I'll always post updated information about the latest security news. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept or you can follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. As always, thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.